Thank you, viewers. Uh, this is Mr. Odingo again coming with chemistry. And uh, today we want to talk about the last chapter under matter. Uh, the last, uh, the last sub-chapter under matter, and it's very key. This is very important, and for those students taking IGCSE uh, uh, classes, whether Cambridge or Red Excel, whether in GCSE in London, this is very important class. And why is it very important? Because this is the point when we compare uh, rate of diffusion, the speed of diffusion of different gases. And I said that substances can move faster than others based on the size or the weight. We expect that a heavier uh, uh, substance will move faster, uh, slowly, sorry. A heavier substance will move uh, slowly compared to a lighter one. And that's the key thing we have to talk about here. Even human beings, we expect that, um, I've never seen those people who compete during Olympics, uh, athletics, uh, uh, someone weighing 180 kilograms running 100 meters and defeating someone who weighs uh, 60 kilograms. That is diffusion. We want to, we want to compare which one uh, who can move faster, the heavier one or the lighter one. And that's why today I want to compare. I've drawn a diagram here. We want to compare two gases. We want to compare these two gases. And for those people who take a GCSE chemistry, whether GCSE is chemistry, this is what comes in exam. They never change this one. But I want to advise you today that exams can change. All gases can be used. Any gas can be used. But the reason why these gases are compared, I want to explain today why do they, the examiners keep on referring to the same, same gases every time. Uh, this gas here, I know you are wondering, there's no gas here. We have ammonia solution and we have hydrochloric uh, acid. When ammonia solution, a concentrated ammonia solution will always produce ammonia gas. Ammonia solution is not stable. It's not a stable solution. So every time you open the container that carries ammonia, you expect ammonia gas to come out. And that is why you are not allowed to allow to keep a container having ammonia solution open. Why? Because after some time, you will find there's no more ammonia remaining. There's water. Why? because ammonia gas will escape. So in this particular cotton wool that is soaked in a concentrated ammonia solution, this one will produce ammonia gas. This one will produce ammonia gas. So ammonia gas, if I write the chemical formula of ammonia gas, is there. Ammonia gas will be coming from this other side. And I've said the reason why this solution will produce ammonia gas. I've said ammonia solution is not stable. Whenever placed somewhere, it breaks and emits or, or produce fumes of ammonia gas. So ammonia gas will diffuse going that direction. Let me use NH3 here as ammonia gas. It will move from this side, going the other side. Uh, on this other side again, hydrochloric acid has the same problem as ammonia. It also breaks down. As the hydrochloric acid is not very stable. It's not a very stable acid like sulfuric acid. When you keep it in a container and you leave it open, fumes of hydrogen chloride gas will come out. So this other side, we have hydrogen chloride hydrogen uh, chloride gas, hydrogen chloride gas will be emitted. Hydrogen chloride is written this way. Will be produced from this other side. So what we have here is HCl, which is gas. So hydro hydrogen chloride gas will come from the other end. This one will come from this other end. Now we have to agree between ammonia and hydrogen chloride, which gas is heavier. And for me to be able to understand this, I want to bring you to uh, what we call relative molecular mass. I want us to calculate relative molecular mass of ammonia. The, the atomic mass, relative atomic mass of ammonia is, uh, is 14 grams per mole. The hydrogen, relative um, uh, uh, atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. But in our case here, we have one ammonia, so we are going to say ammonia, I mean one hydrogen atom, that is times one, plus uh, the, the atoms of hydrogen here are three, so we are going to have three times one. This one means that the gas, one mole of, of ammonia gas will be 17 grams per mole. So that is one mole of ammonia gas at 17 grams. We have found the mass of ammonia gas. What about hydrogen chloride? Hydrogen, we have agreed, the AR, the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, is, is 1. 
the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 35.5 these numbers can be found from the periodic table just check the mass numbers of these atoms in the periodic table that's where you get the relative atomic masses of the things i'm talking about if we add if you have hydrogen chloride here molecular mass mr molecular mass mr of of hydrogen chloride will therefore be we have one atom of hydrogen which is one times one plus we have one atom of chlorine that is one times 35.5 so if you have one plus 35.5 you get 36.5 grams per mole. So for in one mole of hydrogen chloride, we have 36.5 grams. In one mole of ammonia, we have 17 grams. Viewers, which gas is heavier? The gas that is heavier, according to what I can see, uh, is that hydrogen chloride is heavier and ammonia is lighter. In fact, if I have to compare, I can say that um, Hydrogen chloride is more than two times heavier than ammonia. Because if I multiply 17 by two, that is 34. But this is 36.5. So we can say that this one two times lighter than hydrogen chloride. It means that the distance that ammonia will cover will be almost more than two times the distance that hydrogen chloride will cover. So the gas that will move faster here is the lighter one. Remember, we are, the movement is within the same tube. And this tube is transparent. So we want to look at, I want to put two things, assuming this point is in the, the center, this is well, this other side, this one is here. So I want to say this is part A, this is point B, this is point C. We want to look at where will these two gases meet? Will these two gases meet at A? Will these two gases meet at B? Will these two gases meet at C? We want to use their masses to gauge. We don't want to think, we don't want just to imagine. We want to compare these masses, and we have agreed that the heavier one will move slowly. This one will diffuse faster. So if this one will diffuse faster, it means that ammonia will cover more distance compared to, to uh, hydrogen chloride. And we have agreed that if it is almost two times the distance that this one will cover, then probably it can't be at point B, because point B is at the center. It must cross over. So I agree that these gases will meet at point B. It means they'll meet around this particular region here. Now there's something interesting there, and that's why the examiners have chosen these two gases to be used in an experiment, because when these two gases react, they produce a salt, and that salt can be clearly visible, can, can be clearly be seen on the glass, uh, on, in the glass, because the glass is transparent. When you see a white solid or a white smoke forming at once, then you know that is the point where the meeting is. is, is. So when these two gases react, what happens? At the meeting point, when ammonia reacts, uh, ammonia gas reacts with hydrogen chloride, they form a salt called ammonium chloride. And this ammonium chloride is solid. This is a gas. This one is a gas. So we can see what is happening here. And therefore, we will find a substance forming here. This substance forming here, we have said, is a white solid. And this white solid here is not just a white solid without a name. It is called ammonium chloride salt. So this salt is very important. We have to know, in, sometimes in an exam you can be told, can you give the states of matter, sim, states, state symbols that are involved, gases or substances involved in this setup here. We can see we have gas, gas, and we have solid. So we have gas and solid. We don't have liquid states in this particular setup here. So viewers, today we can see that the reason why I said in every exam you'll always meet ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas, because there's a unique feature that they share when they meet, and that can be able to distinguish or to be able to tell us where the gases have met. Because if these gases were both colorless the way they are, and they can't react with each other, it will be very hard for us to know where they met at A, they met at B, or they met at C. But because there's a clear observation made, that is a proper indication that these gases can meet towards the other side because this one has covered more distance than the other one. And that's another thing in examination. You can find this question in examination. They just draw for you this and draw for you this here. They give you the way they met, and then they ask you, show, explain how the diagram, how the a diagram explains that ammonia is diffuses faster. So what do you say? The diagram tells you because ammonia has covered more distance. You can see that it's covered more distance, and this one has covered less distance. The one that has covered more distance probably is the one that is lighter. And that is very important for you to understand 
as a student. So if you are asked, we have explained, we are saying it will meet at C, then how do we explain? Why do they meet at C, not A, not B? We say they met at C because ammonia gas is lighter than hydrogen chloride gas, and so will diffuse faster than hydrogen chloride gas. Viewers, this is a very important point, and when you reach this particular point in the examination, then you understand it very well, and you can be able to respond to questions that examiners are putting forward, then you understand, you have understood the chapter called matter. This is the last chapter, uh, the last sub-chapter sub under matter, and we are going to move forward to the next chapter in the next time. Before we move to that particular chapter, I want to be able to see if there are questions that you have, and if you have them, please be sure to send them via the email that you are, will appear on your screen. Be sure also to like the page, you can communicate with us, like our channel and subscribe so that we can always share this information that we have for you. Thank you.